Sarah here. I'm back today with a new video for you guys. Um, so today we're going to be looking at what I bring on a um, four to six hour day hike. Um, and we're looking at end of spring, beginning of summer, and we're looking at a geographical area of up north. Um, I live in Quebec in Canada, so if I'm looking at in the Tremblant area, um, I'll try to insert the photo of a map here somewhere so you guys can get an idea of where it is that I am trekking just so you can get an idea of why I'm bringing certain gear um, over maybe someone who's hiking in the desert yeah. so I guess uh, we shall get started <laughs> uh, okay I guess we'll get started with the actual bag that I carry with me. So I have um, a few bags that I kind of play around with. I have a smaller 10 to 15 liter bag and then I have the Osprey um, Cyrus 36 which is um, you know double the capacity. Um, this bag that I have with me is from Timbuktu San Francisco and I forget the name of the bag but it is a cycling bag so it has a very narrow profile. Um, it doesn't have any reinforcement in the, the bag. It has no frame um, which makes it super super lightweight um, some people need that extra support but for the amount of gear that I bring with me uh, it really doesn't bother me and I have um, I have back issues so it, it, it really is a comfortable bag for me to carry it does have some padding on the straps um, and it does have a bit of moisture wicking uh, it has like a, a bit of a mesh background so it's you know it's still comfortable I don't want to do like a too in-depth review of this bag um, I'll do that at a later date it's just to show you what it is that I carry inside but just quickly it does have the uh, hip strap and it does have a sternum strap so pretty decent overall so this bag has two mesh pockets as you can see it has a front pocket and it has the giant pocket on the inside um, what I carry with me on the outside I have a water bottle so typically I'll carry one bottle in each pocket um, so I'll try to carry about two liters of water with me when I'm going between four to six hours. Now, again, it depends where you're going. If you're going in an area that's much warmer or if you're going in an area that's much cooler, do you have access to fresh water somewhere else? The water source you can bring some water filter systems. Um, I do have a, a camel pack in my Cyrus bag um, and I, uh, I am looking at buying a Sawyer squeeze so I can actually um, you know, get more water on the trail when I'm walking out. So right now I just bring in uh, bottled water. And for what I'm doing is really more than enough. And so the, the water bottle itself uh, is clipped in with a carabiner and that's really just so that it doesn't fall out when I'm hiking because the pockets are not super sh uh, like super deep. Um, but so far so good, haven't any problems. On the other side, I have um, my phone and some sunglasses. Like I said, typically this will actually be in my front pocket as I would have water bottles on both sides. Um, my sunglasses are really just regular aviators um, and they have a polarized lens and that's really just to help shade against the sun, uh, you know, keeping your eyes safe all day long. And then I have my phone with me and this is the iPhone 8 Plus and it has a life proof case on it. So it is quite huge. Um, and for those of you who have this phone, word of advice, it is a big phone, especially with the case on. I'm having a hard time fitting it in the, pack, the pockets of both of my bags. So I actually went out on eBay and I just bought a zip pouch, an LM zip pouch, that I will be able to fasten to the straps. And once that comes in, I'll be able to give you guys an update on if that solution has worked. And if yes, I'll put a link as to what it is that I have bought. Um, just so that, you know, if any of you are in the same situation, you can attach an external pouch, a pouch pardon me, to a uh, to one of your straps. But, you know, for now, I'm going to deal with what I got. So, uh, then I have some hand sanitizer and I just attach it to my pack. And that's really just to sanitize my hands, whether I'm about to have lunch or uh, if I need to use the bathroom, you know what I mean? It happens. So just to keep my hands sanitized. And um, I keep it on the outside, so don't forget to use it. Okay, moving on. So I'm going to show you guys what's in the uh, small top pouch of my backpack. Um, I carry with me some tissues. I have... Um... <laughs> There's like a little bird or something behind me. Um, I carry tissues with me, um, I do get a leaky nose, I mean allergies or whatever else, if you need to use the bathroom and you want to wipe yourself up, some tissues are always a good thing to have on hand. Um, I will carry with me a, a small lip balm, 
typically my lip balm has UV protection, so it's really just um, you know keeping my lips moisturized all day long. Um, I'll carry with me some sort of GPS device. So I, here I have the Garmin Etrex 10, um, and this is just the basic, basic top of the top of the bottom, bottom of the line, bottom of the range of the GPS devices. Um, but really, all I wanted it for was to set a, a waypoint um, and a marker from where my car is, and then a few waypoints along the way, just so I could find my way back in case the trail blazes were really not clear. Um, or if I decide to go off trail and do some off-roading um, hiking. So really, this is just all I wanted it for, and so far, so, so far, so good. Um, then I carry with me a small pocket knife. I have this in a little pouch. This is the Puma Whitetail. It's the a, a German blade or something. It has a wooden handle. It's really just a small um, flip knife. It has a, a locking mechanism on it. You can not lock it all the way. Um, and really, I keep this. Uh, <laughs> um, this this particular knife is new. I've had an old, a few knives in the past, um, and really. The knives that I carry are more for preparing my lunches, so cutting my cheese or you know slicing salami or something like that. Um, but when you're out hiking by yourself, um, it does kind of give you that extra sense of protection. So you know why not um, carry something like that with you? It doesn't take up much space. Now I have to say that if you're gonna carry something uh, such as a knife for your self protection. Keeping it in your pack might not be the smartest thing. You know, what are you gonna do when something happens? Are you just gonna be like, wait, Mr. Danger, I gotta get my knife out of my pack. So, if you are carrying it for self defense, then you might wanna clip it onto your strap or maybe onto your hip belts or something like that, just so it's a little bit more accessible. Um, but, like I said, as soon as I use it more as like a, a utility tool, more so than protection, um, I just carry it at the top of my pouch. So, next up, I carry a whistle. This is the Fox 40, just a typical, very lightweight whistle. Um, I may or may not have this wrist guard on, so it really just depends on like you know how I feel. And the whistle has two main purposes. The first purpose is to um, warn off any wildlife that might be in the area. So you know, making a bit of noise when you're walking, kind of avoids spooking anything that might be in the area. So it's bears or wolves or who knows what could be in the area. Um, you should always know what you're getting yourself into when you're going for a hike. Just putting that out there. Okay, and the second use for the whistle would be um, if you get into a situation where you've injured yourself, you can't, or you've gotten lost and you can't find your way or you can't move anymore. Um, using a whistle to call for help will help you keep your voice as opposed to yelling for help. Um, so if you know um, certain key whistles like you know Morse code, SOS, or something like that, um, this can really come in handy and can really uh, actually really save your life. So always good to have. Next, I have um, a pair of headphones so I can listen to music while I'm on my hike. Um, now typically I will put in one ear and I'll be listening for outside, you know, whatever is going on on the outside, um, just so that I'm aware of my surroundings. Now I know a lot of people put both headphones in because they really want to immerse themselves into whatever music they're listening to. Um, but I mean, use caution when you're wearing headphones. You just never know what could be surrounding you. I mean, if you're out in the west and there's, you know, rattlesnakes or something like that, um, you just want to be careful. And then the last thing that is uh, totally optional and that's really just a comfort thing, you can bring a compass and a map. So I'll do a video on how to use a compass. Um, I just have a very, very old compass again that I've been using um, for almost 20 years. <laughs> so there you go. These, uh, it just comes on a, on a, a strap like that. Um, there, again, there's a variety of different options of each of the things that I just showed you. These are just the things that I've accumulated over the years and, and work for me. Um, there's a few things that I'm kind of playing around with and kind of changing uh, with my experiences. Um, I'm definitely going more towards the route of shedding weight off of my pack when I'm going out during the day. Um, just because, um, you know, age, getting a little older. <laughs> And all that good stuff. So there you go. I know that there's a lot of different options and feel free to put comments below um, of alternatives of things that I just showed you. Um, please, 
start a discussion. Okay, so moving on into the inside of the pack. Um, so this particular pack opens up quite wide and there's a back pocket. Typically this is where you would put that plastic sheet to give it a bit more structure. Um, now this bag is not waterproof as, as I can recall. I think it might be water resistant. Um, so I just put everything in a small water, uh, water sack or water sack? I don't know. A dry bag? That's the proper term. A dry bag. Um, and this is a still nylon dry bag. Um, I believe this is NSR. NRS. This is the NRS brand. I have some seed assignment ones as well. And the ultra lightweight dry bags, um, they recommend if you want to be ultra, ultra waterproof, they recommend that you actually double layer your bag um, or you go with something that's a little bit you know, thicker or you can use a garbage contractor bag to line your back. This is just for like, you know, rain situations. I'm not fording any rivers with this backpack. So it's more just to give myself some protection against the rain to make sure my gear doesn't really get wet. Um, so if I open up the, gear, the bag, um, inside I'll have another bag. Um, and this is where I put all of my food. I just like having it separate just so if anything leaks, it just kind of like doesn't get onto my gear. Um, this is the Eagle Creek and I believe it's the shoe bag size. Um, but for me, it's like the perfect size for my food. So that's just what I've been using it for. And it's got a cute little handle on top so you can pull it out really excessively. And once you're done with it, it just packs up itty bitty really small. So it really doesn't take up any room at all. Moving on, um, I have a merino wool buff and this is a super, super useful. Um, I, you can use it as a, a neck, you can cover your face. If it's dusty, you can put on top of, <laughs> don't like this, but you can, put on top of your, you know, as a hat or as a bandana. Um, it's just a really useful piece of fabric and um, I have one that's in cotton. I do prefer using this one instead. It's just a little bit warmer and I've had it for a few years and it's still in mint condition. So I'm just gonna keep using this one until, uh, until it's not usable anymore. <laughs> So then I have a first aid kit, um, and this is just a Tupperware that I have with just a few bits and pieces that I've accumulated over the years of things that I have had to use. Um, so I have some band-aids, I have some gauze, some tape, I have a bit of cream, and I have some electrolyte powder so if I get dehydrated I can rehydrate myself um, We're using those little electrolyte powder sachets. Um, I have two stuff sacks here. I have just a rain jacket and some rain pants. Now this rain jacket isn't like the most ultra weight and small, like smallest, most compact, but because I don't bring that much gear with me when I'm hiking, I'm okay with just using this. The pants do um, take up less space and these are Mountain Warehouse Packa Women's lightweight waterproof trousers. Um, they're breathable, they're super comfortable, but just note that they have slits on the sides. So um, if you're not wearing a long jacket and it's raining really um, torrentially, your pants might actually get wet from the inside. But the point of this slit is so that you can get inside your pockets. Um, so pro and con, um, again, this is just like in a, in a pinch if I absolutely needed it. You can also use rain pants just to um, ward off any cold weather or if it's really windy so it's kind of dual purpose so that's why I carry that. Moving on um, I have another uh, dry sack, it's not really a dry sack, a stuff sack um, and I have just a rain jacket in it again um, this is just a, nothing special I mean um, you can choose to bring something that's ultra lightweight um, again that's total preference I just have this one at home and I and I still love it so I have no um, intentions of changing it out quite yet. Um, it's a Far West and I bought it at Mark's um, in, in times of necessity I went camping and it was pouring rain and I forgot my jacket so I just went to the nearest store and I bought whatever I had. Um, and what I like about this jacket is actually quite long so as I like to hike in leggings I like to cover my bottom um, when it's raining so that the water doesn't like touch my butt. I don't know. So it has some pockets um, on, on each side and um, it's just a regular a regular rain jacket. It has um, a little bill on the hood which is really nice so you can kind of cover your, your face um, when you're walking the rain will hit you in the face. So just a very, very, very basic rain jacket. 
And then I'll bring a pair, an extra pair of socks. So these are darn tough socks, um, but you can really bring anything. Typically avoid bringing cotton, so try to bring um, either wool or synthetic fibers as they do tend to dry a little bit faster than cotton. So I just have an extra pair of socks in case, you know, it does rain and I get really wet and by the time I get back to my car, just so I can be comfortable kind of on the way back. It's not really because I plan on staying out for a few days, but it's really just so I can be comfortable on the way back. Conversely, if you don't want to bring a the weight of the extra socks you can just leave them in your car and change when you get there again totally preferable up to up to you to decide how you want to do um, your own hike <laughs> and the last thing that I would bring with me depends on if I'm familiar with the territory and how well marked the trail is um, and this again is like whether it's worth the weight to you or not is really dependent on on your experience level um, and this is just a survival blanket, so it's an aluminum foil blanket. You can ha you can um, you know, stow it in your car um, if you're going on like a, a trip or something, and your car breaks down, and you need, especially in the winter if you live in Canada, your car breaks down, you know, and you want to keep warm. Um, I just have one with me just because you never know if you get into a situation where you can injure yourself or get lost. At least you know that you'll have some sort of heat protection in the middle of the night especially when it's not really hot outside. Um, and so you can use it either as a shelter, as a ground sheet, um, as a, you know, a gear cover. Um, there's a lot of different uses for this. So, you know, it's not, it's not a bad thing to carry. Um, and so what I've done is every time I have a, a bag like this, whether it's food or this particular item, I cut the corners and I round them just because the corners are really sharp. And I don't want to tear a hole in my dry bag. So this is something I started doing, um, you know, if you bring like beef jerky, or if you're bringing like uh, mangoes or something and they have that plastic bag, you can just round the corner so that you don't tear your bag when you're pulling them in and out. I have just a few more items on the inside pockets of my bag. Um, so again, these are optional. <laughs> um, I have a bag of uh, bug spray. I have a smaller container and I couldn't find it so I just brought this so I could show you. This is um, Great Outdoors by Watkins Insect Repellent and this is just because I hate mosquitoes so if I can avoid having them on me I will um, but then again if I'm going for a longer hike or want to bring more gear I might consider not bringing it just because it does weigh quite a bit you know in the grand scheme of things um, but again something to consider. So the next thing could be uh, time dependent when you go on your hike during the day. So I have a black diamond um, headlamp that I've been using for a few years now and it's never failed me. Um, this one I believe is close to 90 or 100 something lumens. Anyways, I can uh, put it in the description below. But basically what I like about this particular headlight is it has the red light. So uh, I find when you're hiking in the evening or even just camping in the evening and you're walking to and fro your campsite, the red light doesn't attract as many mosquitoes or bugs. Um, and it's also not as like aggressive in the eye when you're trying to, you know, go by someone or something like that. So I'll bring this typically if I'm going to a new area and I don't know how long it's going to be or how long I'm going to be on the trail just so that, you know, if the sun um, goes down and I'm still hiking, I have some sort of light and I'm not using up the battery of my phone. And then, um, you know, with the GPS and the light, I will bring up some uh, extra batteries. So I have some AA and AAA batteries. Um, typically just one set, one extra set. I know some, I've seen people with like big bags of batteries that have backup and backup and backup batteries and it's really not that necessary. Um, the GPS that I have, the battery span is 25 hours and the headlamp, I can typically go a couple of days with the same battery. So it's really just kind of like, protection that's why I just carry the one set of extra batteries and the last thing that I carry um, in my pack is really the um, just a pack cover so this is the Sea to Summit rain um, pack cover for small packs and it's in the still nylon it's actually the same material as the dry bag um, and it's just again like an extra protection for torrential downpours um, and it's so small, it just packs away really nice, so you never, you don't even feel it. 
All right, so the next piece of gear that I want to talk about is, again, something that's totally optional um, and it really depends on your personal preference. Um, I am 50-50 depending on where I'm going. Um, it's a pair of trekking poles. So I used to have a pair of aluminum trekking poles that I had gotten um, that were semi-telescopic, so they were a little bit longer and then they telescoped, telescoped? Telescoped, telescoped. Mm, they got bigger. <laughs> you could make them a little longer depending on the terrain that you were on. Um, and I had bought them for snowshoeing, um, so I didn't really necessarily need to have them like clipped to my pack. Um, but as I carry my backpack, especially my Cyrus that has a space to clip on um, trekking poles, I decided to go with something a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. So I did a lot of research um, and I ended up going with the Black Diamonds carbon fiber, uh, cork carbon fiber. Um, I will be testing them out shortly, so as I um, you know, get to use this, this gear, I will be able to give you guys a bit of insight onto my opinions. And of course, um, everything that I show you guys is stuff that I bought, so it's all honest opinions. Um, Okay, so I did want to say, um, I have a, my notes here, and I forgot something that I wanted to talk about, and that was just um, extra items that you uh, might want to bring on your hike, depending on um, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, and it, it, again, it's like comfort levels. So uh, you might want to bring a pair of binoculars if you're going bird watching. Um, you might want to bring a thermal jacket if when you're going is going to end up in the evening um, or you're going somewhere up north where it's a little chillier. Um, some people might want to bring a little MSR pocket rocket, like a little camp stove. Um, you know, if you're going for a full day and you just kind of want to have that hot chocolate at the end of the day um, or a, a coffee or if you want to eat a hot meal during your hike, um, which I don't know many people who do do that, but if you want to, you could. Um, okay, so the next thing that you might want to consider to bring on your hike if you wanted to would be maybe a hammock. I've seen this before where people go out and, you know, hike a couple of hours, they set up their hammock, they lay there for a couple of hours, and then they just pack up and go home. Um, you know, just, again, whatever you want to bring. Um, you might want to bring some sunblock. Um, typically, I'll put mine on in the morning, but I will tend to wear, um, PFG uh, or long sleeve blouses when I'm hiking just so that I have the sun off of me. So these are UV protected blouses. Um, I have a few from Columbia. I can do a what I wear on a hike video if that's interesting to you. And you can also bring a hat. So um, you can bring, uh, you know, a, a, just a regular hat. This is just an old hat that I have from Peggy's Cove. Or you can bring a beanie or whatever. Again, totally for your own comfort. So. Hiking is really just about doing what you want to do to feel comfortable and enjoy your experience. So, you know, comment below on things that you enjoy bringing, um, if you have alternatives to some of the things that I've showed you. Um, and really remember that a hike is a personal thing. You're carrying the things that are going to make your hike better. You're not hiking for somebody else. So make sure that the gear that you choose is not really just gear that someone else has told you to pack but test it out and 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 learn from your experiences and and the more you hike the better you'll understand what you need and what you don't need and you can shake off some of the weight um but just don't forget that it's really just for you to enjoy your experience so on that note i want to leave you guys with this awesome view that i have right now of like a whole bunch of geese in the park right in front of me and i hope that you guys have a really really beautiful week and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye.